big match between you, Sean, and Melody, right? How do you feel about this fight? I tell the girls, girls, I'm not making any fun videos anymore because <laughs> I got what I want, you know? <laughs> so when I was doing stitches, I'm like, maybe let me look from my Instagram story. And then and I'm like, oh, let me go live. And then when I see the video views was like this, I'm like, the, oh, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, the last time I was CGI, I give him warning, I give him a signal, you know, yeah. you should stop, you know? Yeah. And after you, he was, no, 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 no. Yeah. But now, no, that you already I already <laughs> give you a chance before to shut up and stop. Now it's too late, you know? Oh, it's 15 time world champion Demetrius Johnson. You're listening to the Mighty Cast. What's going on, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Mighty Cast. Before we get to our guest, Marab, I want you guys to know this podcast is sponsored by Price Picks. Now, Price Picks is a daily fantasy sports game where you can play directly from your phone. All you gotta do is go to your app store, download Price Pick, and when you do that, make sure you use my promo code MightyCast. They have a cool promotion going on right now. All you gotta do is play five dollars, and you're gonna win fifty dollars where the win lose draw on your picks. And also, they have a free square in the month of September. Caleb Williams. All he's got to do is get one yard. Very simple. You get that square, which is free, and you got to pair with another square, and then boom, you guys got a W. Shout out to Price Picks for sponsoring this podcast. Let's not keep Rob waiting because I don't want him to smash me. Oh, he's not the good. He's not. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> then, That's why I always go like this. Before we I start training, I was like, all right, go ahead and submit me. That way we get the butterflies out. Okay. Just go ahead and submit me <laughs> just to break the ice. Yeah. And like he said, it's training, right? You're just trying to feel each other. Get yeah. the, I look for the exposure of like, man, how strong is Marab? I yeah. want to see him grab me. Like when yeah. I saw you fought yeah. Henry Cejudo, yeah. Yeah. me yeah. and Michael, we didn't think you were going to take him down that many yeah. times. Yeah. But <laughs> the way you were wrestling him, putting him on one foot, the, the inside yeah. trip, and then your endless gas tank. Yeah. Like I was like, and prior to you fighting Henry, this is when me and Henry training here, I say, Henry, yeah. Marab's a way tougher fight than Aljo. He goes, you think so? And I was like, yes. He don't fucking stop. He just keeps coming and coming and coming. Wait, what the fuck's that about? Like, how did you get that gas tank to keep on pushing like that? Uh, yeah, that's a good point, you know, because... <clears throat> so Aljo is skilled. Like, he's way better than me. Jiu-Jitsu wrestling, maybe striking, smart, tall, strong. But mm -hmm. when it comes to fight, yeah, me, like, just coming. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not stop. you know? Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, he... It's it's different, you know, because I, I'm like I'm grinding, fighting for everything. Yeah, yeah. I'll just come in more relaxed, technical. But you, some, it's a fight. Sometimes you gotta you gotta just go for it, right? Yeah, yeah. but like, yeah. but where does where does that gas tank come from? Like, mm -hmm. obviously, and this isn't you know referring more to Aljo. I'm talking more just about you. Right. Like whoever you fight, it's like you always push the pace and drown them. Like you outwork them. Yeah. And when you outworked Henry in the wrestling, I'm like. There's no, I, I'm shocked that you did that. And I turned around and I was like, the, one of the greatest strengths that you have when I watch is you just don't fucking stop. Yeah. Vision shot, take down hands. You're always competing with everybody in every single realm of mixed martial arts. And you don't get tired. Like that has to come from somewhere. Like I know we talked about it when we first, yeah. you know, had the mighty cast, but now that I'm sitting, I know you look great. You got your biceps are popping. Like what type, is there a specific type of training that you do to have that type of gas tank. Uh, okay, my training is like this. Um, so, because of me, like I was doing judo first, mm -hmm. and then after judo, I started fighting in Georgia, and then I moved to the United States. And the first year, I wasn't find, I wasn't able to find the MMA gym. Mm. So, like in you know judo, of course, nothing nothing close to MMA. Yeah. I was fighting in Georgia, but training wasn't good in MMA. Mm -hmm. And uh, first year here in the United States, I wasn't even training MMA gym. And then I find MMA gym, but I start working construction. Mm -hmm. And then I was training only nighttime and not every day. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was so tired and it was still hard. Like, uh, and then and in New York, it's we, you know, you need a good training partners. And I only that time, uh, you know, only Aljo was, you know like a high level mm -hmm. and other guys like yes but like 
we don't have like MMA coach. Yeah, we have a jujitsu coach, Metzera, but I, I just started jujitsu over there. And I was just always, me, I was always trying to get better. Gotcha. You know? So I was always in my head and still now, I started late MMA and I need to learn more. And I was always, uh, I was thinking to, I'm not, a, I'm not high level fighter. You know, mm. I was thinking to always get better. And uh, like the last couple of years, I'm just training full time, but I'm, I mean, to ask your question. So now, now I'm trying to, so last couple of years, I'm trying to go every jiu-jitsu practice. Mm -hmm. I go every MMA practice. I'm here in Vegas and Vegas, of course, we have MMA practice. We have jiu-jitsu practice and uh, like wrestling. And now I try to just training, not like a running and not like if I, if I have extra time or if I'm injured, like, like mm -hmm. I have a little cut now and if I cannot sparring, yes, I will run. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, if I'm healthy, I, I'd rather sparring, do jujitsu, do MMA drilling, um, the, like this, real training, understand? Mm. But real training. So I, I, don't, I don't do like a, a shrinking condition. Strength conditioning. No, I don't do this. Gotcha. So that's why you're conditioning. So what I'm understanding is that your conditioning is tailored. You do your conditioning you get your conditioning via striking, pad work, yeah. wrestling, jujitsu, yes. mixed martial arts training. You're not one of those guys who goes, all right, I got to run six miles, and then I got to do strength, and then I got to do strength and conditioning, then I go swim. You probably do that just for fun activities, right. but most of your conditioning comes from actually training. Real training, mm. yes, real training. Yes. Well, it, it seems to translate very well because there's a lot of people in the beginning of my career, that's what I did for my strength and conditioning was yeah. I would do, you know, Ah, push-ups, ah, pull-ups, ah, squats, and then swimming. And now, later in my career, I would not do none of that. It would just be all uh, Muay Thai, kickboxing, wrestling, jujitsu, and then sparring. That was my that was my training. It was no more. I would swim for recovery, but as far as when it came to actual strength and conditioning, it was via the fight game, just fighting mm -hmm. to get myself ready for the fights. Yes, yes, <clears throat> makes sense. Yeah, like I said, yeah, rather me, I wanna. I want to train real training because um, yeah, lifting weights and running is good, but if this is extra for me, you yeah. know, this is if I have time and if I don't have a training and mm -hmm. GBB gym is closed, I don't have training or I'm traveling. Yes, I will run. Yep. Yes, I will lift. And if I'm somewhere, then I I cannot sparring or I cannot do jujitsu. I Damn. will do I will do this. You know? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Mighty Cast. I'm here with Marab. He, this man is headlining USC 306 at the Sphere. It's a monumental moment, not just for mixed martial arts career, but this man's career is getting an opportunity to fight for the world championship. How are you doing, Marab? I'm doing great. Thank you, Dimitrius, for having me here. Uh, it's my pleasure and uh, it's an honor to be here in the, your podcast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really, man, like, uh, I, you, are, you are amazing. You are a real goat and big respect. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Uh, big opportunity for you. Yes. Right? Uh, how, how many fights you've got in your, you know, in the UFC? How many fight? Five, four? Fight win streak. What are we at right now? Uh, well, right now we have ten win streak. Ten fight win streak. Yes, sir. Uh, how many? How many wins in the UFC? Uh, yeah, ten win. Ten win in UFC. I have twelve fights in UFC. Whoa, whoa, whoa hang on. You're on a ten fight fucking win streak. Yes. In the UFC, and you're now just getting a title shot. Yes, sir. See, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is uh, this is number one bullshit. <laughs> yes. It, it truly is. You think about that. Yeah. Ten fight win streak in the UFC. And I beat three former champions. Three former champions, and you're finally now getting your opportunity to fight for well, the belt. Walter was champ though. So. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah. don't fucking matter. Ten <laughs> fight win streak. <laughs> And obviously, you don't want to fight Aljo because you guys are best friends, right? But yeah. it's just crazy. I feel in today's market of mixed martial arts is that people are getting title shots off losses, right? right. Yeah. And here you are, your you're 10 fight win streak in the UFC, and you're now finally getting a title shot where people have got title shots off less. Talk me through that. You know, obviously, we knew you couldn't do it because Aljo was there, but now finally, you're getting your opportunity to fight for the belt after 10 fight win streak like wh how does that feel finally to get the opportunity that you well deserve Thank more you. than anybody on the whole fucking roster right like more deserving than tom aspinall more deserving than fucking you know 
Max Holloway. Like, if yeah. anybody's a true number one contender in the division, it is you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But uh, I just want to uh, correct one thing, you know. Uh, yes, Aljo was champion, and mm -hmm. he's my brother. Yep. And uh, I always say I'm, I'm very thankful for Aljo. I was I was his training partner. Of and course, I'm still, of course. I'm, we are friends, and we always training together. And but. UFC no, never offer us to fight each other, you mm -hmm. know? Of course, I say, and I don't want to fight Aljo, yep. of course. But, like, if UFC really say they send us contract, hey, Merab and Aljo, you guys have to fight each other, then maybe, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we never say, no, we, then they can blame on us. But mm -hmm. they never, like, you know, they never <clears throat> throw us in this... Yeah, they never sent you a contract like, hey, Marab, you're fighting Aljo. Yeah. Aljo, you're fighting Marab. They yeah. never, they never. Yeah. I applaud the UFC for yeah. not putting you guys in that position, right? Because you don't want to be put in that position. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, could you imagine, like, you go to Aljo, you go, yo, Aljo, hey, I got an email from uh, the UFC brass and they want me to fight you. He goes, what? Yeah. So I think it's good that they never did that, right? Yeah. So I think, I think what you're trying to clarify is. But, no, no, sorry, brother. Okay, okay. Uh, so what I'm trying to, like, some people, there is some people, oh, you, you don't fight Aljo. Yeah, you know, I don't fight. Of course, I don't want to fight, but, you know, but don't blame me because, like, you have seen also never offer us. Exactly. Know? Yeah, yeah. Assholes. Yeah. Fans. <laughs> they didn't... Um, the UFC never offered those guys to fight each other. Yes. Even when Aljo was a champion and you were on an right. eight-fight win streak. Right. And I think the reason why is because they knew what the answer was going to be. They knew you guys were never going to fight each other. I right? don't think so. No. What, you think you would have fought Aljo? No, I don't. Oh, but, yeah. but I think, I truly believe, no, like, <laughs> I, I believe that they knew that, it's like this. Yeah. If you see a hot chick at the club, you're like, man, I want to, she going to my Ah, she probably won. I'm not gonna ask her. But no, you. Hey, you want to suck this? Hey, let's let's go to dinner and after dinner that is it. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> See, bro. <Mariah, laughs> What's going on, guys? This podcast is sponsored by Via Hemp. Now, Via Hemp is a high premium hemp company where they have amazing products among the spectrum of. THCA, CBD, and some gummies. Now, they have all these cool-ass products. Now, this one is the Vihemp Cloud 9 to get you to that next level of elevation. And, you know, we just had the summer, but we're going right into the fall. They also have the high premium THCA flower. Now, the cool thing about uh, Vihemp is that it's high premium products. It gets shipped directly to your doorstep as long as it's legal in your state. And if you are 21 and over and Ooh, I just opened this bad one up and it smells delicious. Comes in this nice little package. This one right here is called Sunset Sherbet THCA Hemp Flower. This is the Indica strain. Indica means in the couch or sativa, which is means active, getting you feeling good. It gets you elevated. Now, if you guys want to try by hemp, all you got to do is look in the description below. Make sure you use my promo code MIGHTY. That will knock off 15% of your order shout out to via hemp for sponsoring this podcast now let's get back to marab the machine see yeah. let's, let's, let's jump let's jump ship okay yeah. each time i see you doing these skits you always with these big ass uh, you know <laughs> white girls big booties in your house and you're partying where do you get these girls where do they come from Brother, uh, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not married yet. You know, yeah, before I, know. I find the the one and only the good girl. Yeah, I have a little bit fun. You yeah. Know? So this way, no one is jealous. Yeah. No one can tell me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, you know, I'm friends with a lot of lots of girls and. Um, um, Hey, I'm happy for you. I love it. Each time I see the videos, yeah. I'm like, like a skit comes on. I'm like, oh, here we go. Is it, <laughs> it going to be the fake Sean O'Malley or is he got all these girls? The next one, it's like, you have like six girls in your house just partying. I'm like, there ain't no dudes. It's just, it's just Marab. Great, it's skits, but I think me and Michael were literally just talking about this on the way over here because my wife was like, oh, who's coming on a podcast? And I was like, oh, it's Marab. And she goes, oh, I think I know who that is. And then Michael's like, yeah, he always has these skits online and that's what... 
Yeah. You know, that's how you build your brand and people yeah. actually enjoy the skits. And then she goes, oh, I just read something about him. You posted about your cut right. on your eye. We'll talk about that later. But I just enjoy your skits and I love them. But that's one question I was asking. I was like, this man's always with fucking random ass chicks, hot chicks. And I'm like, man, he's got a fucking, you know, a whole bunch of booty calls and different area codes. <laughs> we, are, we are living in Vegas and um, yeah, there is lots of single people here and, yeah. and you know, we have... Single people club. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, no, no. Okay, let's move on. So you recently suffered an injury in training, right? It's no secret. You you yeah. you blasted on the internet. What happened? Was it a head butt? Was it uh, sparring? Was it a knee? I was sparring and uh, uh, and I actually I land good right hand uh, to my sparring partner mm -hmm. and. Um, and the uh, same time I got him clinch and I asked him, you okay? Because it was really big. He said, it's okay, I continue, yeah. continue. And I keep him against the wall and um, we was in clinch and when he say, I give him a couple of seconds mm -hmm. and I drop level, like, you know, I, then, then I, I was here and my head was here yep. and I drop to like, to start wrestling because yep. I don't want to fight him again or like, yeah. because, you know, he was a little hurt. I tried to wrestling and I, myself, like he wasn't doing anything. I just drop level and I hit my eye to his hip oh. and then just open like it was like just resting situation mm. and they opened my eye and uh, I was bleeding and uh, yeah I after, it was like end of the third round and mm -hmm. uh, I finished up round and uh, and um, yeah I just um, yeah, do shadow boxing after and everything and uh, and uh, so like me in my head I'm thinking yeah this is I should do stitches just in case. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's because I'm... 100%. I'm, right. It's a fucking cut. Right. You know, you want to try to heal it as fast as possible because, you know, the fight's coming up. Right. You don't want to postpone the fight. It's, your, your, it's the opportunity you are well-deserved. So the last thing you want to do is like, oh, can I get eight weeks to the heal? Like, no, fuck that. Because you know the UFC, they're going to move on with somebody else. Right. So you get it stitched up. Yeah. So, yeah, as a, I mean, champion, you know, like this happened... Every 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 time, I mean, when yeah. you spine cuts and everything, yeah. bruises and and everything, and uh, so like me think uh, it's gonna maybe I'm gonna skip my next sparring session on Thursday, mm -hmm. but Saturday I'll be fine because yeah. uh, I'm gonna do stitches today and then like takes five days yep. to I can sparring again. Yeah, yeah, and then it's just no big deal. And then I have more than three weeks. And this is, of course, nothing we know. Yeah. You know, it's not fight week. Or yep. It's not like day before or something. And then, and yeah, I, I was uh, messaging some people who can do stitches and uh, whatever it is, I find some people who can help me mm -hmm. with this. And then actually, uh, anyways. And uh, so when I was doing stitches and I pull up my, my phone and I want to look, you know, yeah. And oh, I'm like, maybe let me look from my Instagram uh, story. And then and I'm like, oh, let me go live. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically going down a fucking, you're going down a rabbit hole. It's like, let me look how, let me see how it looks. Yeah. Let me go on Instagram and see how it looks. Oh, let me go live on Instagram. Yeah. So you go live, you, so you went on Instagram live. You yeah. didn't do a, like a story, you just went live. I went live and yeah. then I see the like already... 2,500 people watching this my live. Three, only it was three, three, three minutes long, yeah, yeah, my yeah. live video. Yeah. But then it was, I, I thought it was fun because I did one af after my fight, I got a little cut and yeah. I, they was doing stitches. And yeah. I, after my fight, I, I have, I, I was making video and it was funny, like when yeah. they're stitching and I'm yeah. talking. And yeah. I was enjoying like when she was stitching <laughs> at me. Yeah. And, this uh, was after one of your fights. Yeah, before that. Before that. And then, then like when I... You got hurt just now just again. Just now. And then when I put it live and I was enjoying watching myself and I want to see the, what people are commenting, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when I see it was a lot of people was watching and lots of comments. And I keep it there. I yeah. don't delete the yeah, video. Ah, I gotcha. And then when I see the video views was like this, I'm like, the, oh, it's interesting. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I keep it there. You know, I don't delete. I like that. Oh, nobody's going to know. He's keeping her. He's getting stitched up. It's like, little behold, three weeks, you got to fucking fight. Everybody was like, what the fuck? And then you were like, you go back, oh, it's like 200,000 views. You didn't think it was gonna get that much like no, attraction, really? No, oh man, no. you. I think you gotta you gotta give yourself more credit when credit's due. You're 
you have a huge following that people truly enjoy, not just your fight style, but your personality and also like what you bring to the table. So I think you going live and giving people the access to your daily life and see what you're doing and how often are you getting stitched up? It's very rare. So I think, you know, you have a big fan base and I think, you know, you got to realize that. So you, oh, okay. you, know, know. You, you, you take a shit with a girl sitting there and you go live. I'm sure they're all going to tune in and watch that as well. Yeah. So you, you do the live Instagram live. You have so many viewership. Then Dana White gets wind of you posting that. Yeah. He didn't have very nice kind words to say about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, Mike was always a big fan of, uh, he's not a big fan of how, uh, the UFC brass cuts down his fighters and say, you know, that was a very stupid thing that you, you, you did. Yeah. Right. But you felt it was the right thing to do. Hey, I, <clears throat> I don't, if it was something serious injury, uh huh. Of course, I will hide it. I will yeah. not post it. I will not even tell maybe nobody. But mm -hmm. like I said, it was no big deal. Little cut. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to take three, four days. Yep. And it's going to heal up. And uh, I even will be more careful because next sparring session, I'm going to oh, use the, my head of gear. Course, of course. I even be more hungrier. Yep. It, this even like I, every time I have a little injury, even makes me more focused, more mm -hmm. disciplined, more smart. And, and even if... People saying Sean O'Malley will see that he will target. Okay, let him try. Yeah. That's why I'm, okay, <laughs> let, let him focus on this, and yeah. then we will see what I'm gonna take him down. Or I'm yeah. gonna punch him back or something. Yeah. Yeah, of course, Sean O'Malley will try to knock me out, but he's of not course. gonna. Oh, it was left eye, right eye. Yeah. Let me hit Sammy's spot. It's not gonna do. It's a fight. Of yeah. course, he's gonna try to knock me out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we already know it's nothing secret. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. Uh, anyway, so. I posted because it was no big deal in my head. This yeah. is I have time and everything. That's why I posted. But same time, yes, I don't hide nothing. I have fun. Yeah. And this is who I am. Yeah. And then some people may call me stupid. Whatever <laughs> you guys think, you yeah. fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. This is who I am. You know. Well, well I think it's more game. So you're like, you think this gonna fucking stop me from yeah. losing that fight? You think this cut is a big deal? It's not a big deal, right? right? And I love that mindset where you're like. He's going to try to hit me. I want you to hit me. I, I yeah. like to see you try because you know, I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day and I was like, mixed martial arts, it's a fight. And if you're so worried about getting taken down and getting punched, right. then you're not going to do very well. Right. But if you're like, if you accept the inevitability that it's going to happen, then it makes fighting so much easier. Right. And so you have in mind, mindset like, he is going to try to punch me. Is a left eye, right eye? Mm -hmm. I like to see you try because I'm not as easy. It's just like saying people's like, oh, kick his leg. Okay, go kick his leg. It's a lot harder said than done. It's like you, like Cameron's like, I'm an out wrestle Marab. Okay, yeah, yeah, you might be a better wrestler, but when we fight, yeah. you're not going to get you. I don't think he took you down once, did he? <clears throat> he clipped me, I think. Like when no, he I, clipped you. I, yeah, yeah. You're, you're throwing punches. Punches, yeah. that shit yeah. happens. But yeah. he's known for his, he's a gold yeah. medalist yeah. in Olympic. And he didn't take you down once. Uh, what happened was I dropped him and I over rush. And then he ducking me, like, you know, he ducking me and he mm. he put me down. Yeah. It that was good. out of defense, not yeah. as attack, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So, it but, did take me down. Yeah. Like, it's good, but like, yeah, I take more than, than yeah, like, as a, like, Olympic wrestler and then me just fight it. Yes. Yes. I, I exactly. So yeah, I, I, I think I think it's funny. Well, I, I I don't think you were dumb doing that video. I think you know because when I caught one of it, Destiny thought it was how you cut weight, and I was like, no, no, no. Marab cut himself. It's a, it's it's a it's a very simple cut. It will heal. It's from scar tissue because it wasn't like you right. got hit there and it just blew up. Yes. You went down for a shot. The ribs, not ribs, but the uh, the, oh, Hips. the hip bone is very um, sharp mm -hmm. and just open it up. So you should be fine. If it was open like, like yes. that, that's then the that's, a, that's a serious cut where it's like, okay, you got to no activity for six to eight weeks to get it an, enough time to close in the scar over. So it's not yes. a big deal. Yes, sir. So, okay, now let's talk about this. Big match between you, Sean and Melody, right? Yes. You finally get an opportunity to fight for the belt at the Sphere. How do you feel about this fight? Oh, I was chasing this guy in this fight long time already because um, he once we saw him on Dana White contender no the Dana White uh, contender sure. serious yep. fight mm -hmm. and he finished the guy knockout. I'm like, whoa, who is this guy in mm -hmm. my weight class? So of course I keep an eye on him, and after 
he has like one win and next win UFC. Oh, I want to fight the guy because mm -hmm. he was already starting. He was already big name, and then I was just beginner too UFC. Yeah. And <clears throat> and the first two fights I have a controversial lose in UFC. Like you know, first I was sick, second like controversial, whatever something. I I I think I win both, but I, it it says loss yeah. in my record. Yeah. And um, but once I win the, my next fight, I call. Sean O'Malley, like to, I want to fight with him. Mm -hmm. and da, 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 da. So I was like 0 and 1 in UFC, but yeah. I called him out. I, 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 I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I'm like, I'm 0 1 away, but I'm going to get there. But but even that, it, I, I, maybe he should take because it's easy. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I win next fight, then I still call him out. And every time I was mentioning his name, the only one guy I was calling out oh, I want to fight that was him mm -hmm. but he never answered never respond even I was ranked above him or behind him mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. he never uh, say anything about always he always ignored me and um, but I guess thank God it's happened like this yeah. because now it's perfect time mm -hmm. uh, now we will all see who's better fighter mm -hmm. and uh, and then it's it's for the UFC belt, and it, this is for the UFC champion. So, and um, I believe I am better than him. I believe I can beat him, and I can win this fight. And uh, I'm excited. And uh, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if I was getting this fight up until <clears throat> maybe like one month ago, like take maybe one month or one weeks ago, exactly like two months before the fight. Yeah, two months before and maybe one week so two months and one week before the fight the actual fight so if we they, look at two weeks it, two months it would be September October, nine, weeks. Uh, uh, nine weeks but if we back, go backtrack it would be uh, July so you didn't know if you're gonna get the fight until July is when they yeah. finally announced it like right. hey you're getting an opportunity because right. July August September so that's nine weeks before yeah, the fight exactly yes yeah. so they they call me and then hey Marab Dan, you fighting Sean O'Malley at the spare, and we're gonna send we're gonna send the UFC countdown media, like mm -hmm. you know, and you're gonna do all this. And I was so happy, I was so released. You called all the girls, like, hey girls, come on over, we want to make a skit. <laughs> Actually, I tell the girls, girls, don't come over. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm locked in, fight this on. <laughs> And I'm not making any fun videos anymore because <laughs> I got what I want, you know? <laughs> I got, that's why I was doing, pushing these videos with yeah. kids because I want to get this fight. Absolutely. I was pushing to fight at the spare. Mm -hmm. I was dream. And when I saw the video, Dana White was doing press conference or something and he was saying, we already have a main event. Uh, this fight is done. Mm. We're gonna announce soon, and then I'm like, "Oh my! I guess it's not me." And when oh, I'm fighting, when okay. I'm fighting Sean, and Sean will say, Sh "Sean O'Malley was saying, oh, maybe he mentioned maybe December." I'm like, "Oh, maybe. Uh, I hope it's me." And yeah. then it's okay. Me fight December. I don't care. Yeah. And then, and when they told me that yes, I'm fighting at the Spurs, September, I was so released. Nice. Uh, I was so excited. You know, you know, we know how it's all. When oh, fight, yeah, absolutely. Fight, they tell you you're fighting. Yeah, yeah. That day, you very excited, mm -hmm. you're happy, mm -hmm. you're feeling some motion, and then after, you're just normal. Yeah. Normal. And now, it's like a normal. Like now, of course, it's a big, huge oh, title fight at the Spare on Mexican's Independence Day, but this is just another fight for yep. me and it's a big responsibility. I'm just only thinking for fight. Yep. I don't think about too much belt what I'm gonna say or what I'm gonna do. Oh, what I'm gonna do is, God willing, uh, I believe I'm gonna win this mm -hmm. and I wanna do a lot of, lots of great things with belt. I wanna travel the world, visit a couple of countries, of course, first my country yeah. and a couple of European countries and just show the, everyone. I'm like, Normal guy, small yeah, guy. Absolutely, you saw construction. Right, yeah. Well, it, it's kind of crazy because, you know, you're on a 10 fight win streak, you're finally getting an opportunity to fight for the belt. You've already beat three former world champions. You beat Henry Cejudo, you beat Jose Aldo, <clears throat> and, Peter Yan. And, and, and Peter Yan. Now, if you beat Sugar Sean O'Malley, who's after that? You've already, you, you worked your way through the castle and beating everybody on the way to where a lot of people they get on three fight win streak and you beat the champion you have the whole top 10 that you could fight next right so i feel like yeah. your case is a little more unique than today's market in the ufc where it when you beat 
if and when you beat Sean O'Malley, it's like who would Marab fight next? Like I don't want to look too yeah. far, but like you 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 beaten the whole you beaten everybody, yeah. right? You beaten everybody to get to this point in your career, yeah. like. Yeah, I would love to fight um, Figueroa. Oh yeah. yeah, he just I'm, came to the division. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's former champion. Yeah. he's the guy dangerous. He you, knocks people out. If you beat Sean O'Malley and you beat Figueroa, you probably beaten the most like <laughs> former champions. Yeah. It's gonna be five, right? That'll be five former champions. I don't think anybody's done that before. I think mm -hmm. Alex. Pejeda has beaten like one or two, maybe. I'm not sure, but like your your credentials wow. so far prior to getting wow. that title shot is already a lot higher than a number one contender, if that makes right. sense. Wow, wow. Right? Yeah. So that's, uh, Good point, yes. that's you know, I'm, I'm sitting here just going through the numbers. Ladies. I mean, numbers don't lie. Women do, which you know a lot about, right? <laughs> but, uh, me, I'm, 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 I'm getting better everywhere. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the 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 thing that's unique about this fight, you fighting Sean O'Malley, is that you already been in a training camp with you know Aljo preparing for Sean O'Malley, right? And then you got to see firsthand, see Sean fight, be there live, be in the corner, and yeah. and basically take in that energy, right? right? And that's one of the things that I felt that helped me when I fought uh, Adriano Marias. And even Henry Sudo the first time was I got to sit there, watch them both fight. And then the first time I fought Adriano, I didn't get to see him fight once. Uh. But then the second time I watched him fight, I was getting ready to fight Rod Tang. And I was sitting there watching him fight Yuya Wakamatsu. And I can sit there and watch him and move. I'm uh. like, okay, yeah, uh. that's what I saw. Uh. Yep, okay, perfect. I'll beat him. I'll beat uh. him next time. I can uh. see it, right? Uh. I think for you, you saw, you, you were there. You saw, you went to the training camp with Aljo, with O'Malley. And then you saw the fight. And now you're like, okay, I'm going to get the opportunity to actually pick up where Amali, not where Amali, where Aljo kind of left off, where Aljo was trying to get across that, we call it the void, the right. distance, yeah. as us being 5'3", you're probably 5'5". Five, five. I don't want to cut yeah, you yeah, short, yeah, right? Yeah, you're 5'5". Five, five. How tall is this motherfucker? Yeah, 5'5". 5'5"? Five, five. Five, five? Oh, hey, Michael left, hey, mm, of course. Don't, don't tell no one. I'm 5'5", five, five, but in my, my, uh, you might tell the whole, you might, you might tell the whole world right now, bro. It says five six, but I'm five five. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I fucking love that. When I played football in high school, they're like, "All right, Timmy Johnson, we're gonna put you at five eight, one eighty. I was like, "Y'all know I ain't no fucking five eight and one eighty. I'm five, I'm five two, and I'm like hundred and twelve pounds. Like, we don't want people on the roster to see that. We yeah. don't make you look big. Oh, okay, good. But yeah. as us being shorter fighters, fighting a taller guy, it's no secret. When we want to get to them, it's always hard, right? Even when you're the same height as a, a striker who moves lateral and dynamic, it's always hard. I think that that's the biggest conundrum of this fight is how do you solve that puzzle? But I think you have something in your back pocket that you've watched them fight. You've been in the training camp already once with Aljo to get ready for him. Like you going through that, do you think that gives you some sense of um, like you've already had the opportunity to feel this energy before? Um, uh, actually, I don't think it's a big deal. He's tall. I mean, he's, the more important he walks, his footwork is good. Yeah. You know, you know footwork is good and his speed and how he like, like counts, like he steps back and mm -hmm. counts with the right hook and he's dangerous for sure. But um, I mean, I'm gonna focus myself of and course. I'm gonna just do my thing. And uh, and whatever fight will go, I'll be ready. Even <laughs> even shaking, even of course, like uh, I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna look take down and take him down. But even if he defends, I'm, I'm fine. It's, it's a fight, MMA fight, and I've been there. I've been sparring uh, with tall guys, short guys, every every size of guys, and um, uh, yeah, like it's another fight for me. And I just I believe in myself, you know. Just I have a good cardio um, experience, mm -hmm. and and then if if he hits me, he will wake me up, and yeah. I even come more hard. It's, it's kind of like when Harry hit you, he hits you. <laughs> you're like, okay, motherfucker, it's time to go. Right? Use it yeah. when you get hit, you wake yeah. up. Let's let's talk about these side quests you've been doing. You recently just did a judo competition. Uh, sambo, sambo. Excuse me, sambo. Yeah. You did a sambo competition. My my son was asking me the other day, what's the difference between sambo and judo? And I was like, yeah. I'm I'm not. I don't want to lie. Yeah. I, I think I knew when I told him. He yeah, it's striking 
and sambo, right? Yeah. So okay, yeah, I will explain. So uh, judo, it's an Olympic sport, and it's a Japanese uh, wrestling, and mm -hmm. then it's a big and uh, everything. So sambo, I think Russian stole some technique from Georgian traditional wrestling, and mm -hmm. they make this sambo. It's it's sambo. It's a wrestling mm -hmm. wrestling sambo, and then there is combat sambo. Two mm. type of two type. So they stole the like the it's a Russian sport, mm -hmm. but they stole all the wrestling from the gi mm -hmm. and like all the technique from wrestling and judo and everything and then they make wrestling sambo and then combat sambo it's like mma it's like mma but with the wrestling gi takedown so there is two type of sambo yeah. combat sambo and wrestling sambo so wrestling sambo is more most popular mm -hmm. and then uh they have a combat sambo too a combat sambo not this much popular in every country they just starting combat sambo with the women's too, mm. but before they don't have women's. Here's a question: In yeah. combat sambo, can you pull guard? Because there is, you can do some jujitsu, correct? Yeah. So yeah. if you do in combat sambo, can I come and grab you and pull guard or no? No. So yeah, if you, it's, it's, I'm gonna score the takedown. Oh, okay, it's, you score the takedown. So in, in combat sambo, how it works is <clears throat> the punching scores don't count. Uh huh. Either knockdown counts. Yep. Or takedown counts. Gotcha. Or like when you. Like in wrestling, you holding somebody like you know when you make um, you put them on the shoulders, yeah, like, like, like pin, pinning them, right? Mm -hmm. so, but you need to pin them twenty seconds. Holy shit! To get four points, damn. Yeah, twenty seconds, but twenty seconds. But with a jacket, it's much easier. You know, sometimes. Fuck, I don't know, man. Twenty seconds, yeah, that's hard. It's a big or arm bar is good yeah. and the leg leg is good. Gotcha. And then a wrestling sambo, uh, arm bar, leg lock. Penning, mm -hmm. but no choke. Wrestling gotcha. sambo. Gotcha. But in uh, combat sambo, choke is good. Uh, leg lock is good. Armbar is good. Triangle is good. Wh then headbutt is fine too. On the ground. Uh, yeah, I think strike. Strike. Uh, no, in in standing. Standing. Hey, yeah. So, but once it hits the ground, you can't strike. It's all grappling. You can strike, but no need to the face. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no need to the. Yeah. No headbutt to the ground either. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> you better fucking yeah. stop. No. Interesting. Yeah. And so, what if you get on top, you mount them, you grind the pounding? Because you said they, you, they will let you fight like like a karate combat, like a couple of seconds and they will let you out. Okay, I gotcha. Because none of the no strikes count. They don't care. So, you could be moving, light somebody up, kicking them, punching them. And then kick. you take me down one time for score the four points. Four points. And then you're going to beat me. All that does nothing. That, I wow. may beat you up like all, wow. all around. Interesting. Yeah. But why why is it like that, you think? Because it's some, it's a wrestling and it's mm. they have own style, everything. That's why it's hard, you know, because I mean, I'm not, I don't, I, I used to do judo and mm -hmm. then sambo, like wrestling. Yeah. And then I started MMA. Mm -hmm. Then now I fight combat sambo because it's easy because i'm an mma fighter yeah, but, you just, but, but i don't do this like um, the, the throws from the, the yeah. belt anymore yeah. or then the, with the gi because yeah. uh i'm not focused on this and this you, some guys on, some guys they're good with the throws and once yeah. they throw you they, and, they get four points yes and, and you're and, like fuck and it's yeah. like mm. <laughs> so, Wait, so let's talk about the side quest you went yeah. and did a sambo uh, a tournament yes and you end up taking first place yes right so why why did you go do that were you just bored uh, or, yes. or 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 did, were you like uh or were you like you know what i'm doing the sambo competition i'm not going to tell anybody they'll find out on instagram right or did you uh, call you say hey can i go do the sambo competition or did you I, just do it i i just did um, you just did it i just did <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck oh, yeah it's just like training for me you know <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, listen you know some of the sparring session is harder than fight oh 1000 percent. but yeah. you are getting ready so for example if i'm uh, contracting you to fight at the sphere yeah okay and you get injured no worries uh, marab because you you're getting ready for this but fight that was the thing so i i wasn't uh sure they probably was getting title fight and then i wasn't no they i was pushing that the spare yeah i wasn't sure yeah i was thinking i was hoping at least guy got december somewhere maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. or somewhere and um and so uh, what happened was the the one guy who works in u.s sambo federation he called me hey marab no, he was keep texting me actually he was keep texting me and you know like how our phone goes yeah, crazy yeah yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then and then like, it was Thursday night and he called me, Merab, uh, like I was texting you, I guess you're busy, but the Saturday we have competition, like US uh, 
US US championship, US championship. Yeah, USA championship. Yeah. 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 Now, I, since you US citizen, mm. you wanna you wanna do that because if I'm Georgian, I have a Georgian passport. Before I cannot mm. compete it, you know. Uh, in US championship. Gotcha, you know, gotcha. You know so you have to be a citizen. Gotcha. So I said, oh, uh, and I said, yes, of course. Yeah. Of course, I will do it. And yeah. I just answered yes. And uh, oh, I, I got to drop a little bit weight. So I said, when I can make weight? They say, tomorrow night you can make, okay. I said, okay, I, I already, I'm, I'm going to skip my meal. What's the weight class? What weight class you compete at? Uh... Uh, it's a uh, kilos, um, 64 kilos. For kilos, that's like 145, I think it is. Something like this. Yeah, okay, yeah, 145. So 145. Yeah. So yeah, and then I, I, I was already finished training. I skipped the meal and I run next day. And then you're fine. Some, and, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then it was a little bit. They give me some little extra pounds or something. You know? Okay. And then yeah, that was easy. And then, not easy, but you know whatever. Yeah. And then yeah, so, and then the yeah, next. I fly to Texas mm -hmm. the next day, and I got there morning, Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and um, and yeah. So there is the lots and, of the, and then so you just fucking competed. Yeah. How many competed. matches did you have? Altogether, I have five matches. Five matches. Yeah. Combat sambo or just wrestling sambo? I did two wrestling sambo and then three combat sambo. <laughs> yeah. I just fucking. I'll say it once again. I've been saying a lot lately is that this is the best time in combat sports, this era, because back in the day, you would never see Rich Franklin. You never see Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell, Anderson Silva, fuck, uh, John Jones. You would never see the athletes at the top of the game go off and do the side quest, right. right? Like you would not see a person who's in line to fight for world title go off and do five matches, <laughs> two combat, uh, three combat sambo and two wrestling sambo. sambo. Like it's just unheard of. But now we have these like athletes where here we are, here mm -hmm. you are. You're like, you know what? Oh, Marab, you want to come do some sambo? Fuck it. Let's do it. You fly to Texas. You do five matches. Oh, you had your buddy Aljo. Oh, I'm in 80. I'm in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to grapple. Then you have other athletes doing the exact same thing. Now, when you go and do that, do you enjoy it? Or do you just like, oh, it's, I'm just, well, obviously you enjoy it. But are you ever worried about getting injured when you're going to go do these side quests? No, though, this one, no. Because, <clears throat> like I said, it's like a training for me. Mm. I mean, the... Uh, so fighting, fighting, fight, when I fight, I know it's like process. I have to eat clean. I have mm. to be like super because this doesn't matter. You can lose and you know, it's not, uh, it does not going to affect me, but the, the fight, it's like a, it's a legacy, you know, yep, this yep. is legacy. but this is just challenge, you know, mm. can I do it? I have time. I have a focus. I have intention. Like, you know, and then yes, and if it gives me motivation, it gives me something yep. to makes me happy. I will do it. But fighting, it's, it's legacy and um, the m big money in the yep. table yep. and um, big legacy. And I'm taking serious. Yeah, eat eat everything right and cut blood, punch of weight and uh, cut blood weight is always hard. And, yeah, uh, I always cry. I, I think I think you always cry when you cut weight. No, nah, not cry, but yeah. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I heard that. But I think you doing these side quests actually cements your legacy even more because you're still a challenger challenging yourself yeah, yeah. outside of your profession right. right like i think a lot of fans enjoy that because it doesn't show that you're just a one trick not a one trick pony but you're just focused on winning the belt obviously that's the end game is to become a champion defend the belt multiple uh, multiple times make a lot of money but you're still challenging yourself doing these side quests in in the in the combat samba or whatever it may be and i think you know, you having a mindset that it doesn't matter if you lose in that because it's just, no, nah, I'm, I'm yeah. challenging myself. But, you know, because yeah. those guys, how old were they? Were they your age or younger, older? Uh, some of them my age, some of them young. Yeah. Younger, right? So you're going against guys who are a lot younger and that's what they focus on, yeah. which is Sambo, yeah. wrestling and combat sam Sambo. So I think it does submit more to your legacy, right? Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. It does, ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of people don't do this. Yeah. Like, I say it again. This is a time, if you're a mixed martial arts fan, if you're a combat fan, a lot of people are 
get an opportunity to see you guys compete a lot more instead of just in mixed martial arts, but in whatever you want to do. Right? Can so it's good. Absolutely. You can drink the first four minutes drink. Mm. I don't know if it's cold, but it's absolutely delicious. It's it's I good. like it. It's it's uh it's something new. They just started sponsoring the podcast and it's delicious. I like to search mm. blast and the blueberry. It's pretty good. Oh my god. It's pretty so good. Delicious, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's what's your end game? Like after wh- wh- how much longer do you want to fight for? Because you're what, 33, 34? 33. 33. 33. Oh how much longer do you want to fight for? Uh, I want to keep fighting forever like you, man. No, I'm <laughs> Hey, hey, by the time this comes out, which will be September s- before you fight, yeah, I've already yeah, retired. Don't be, don't be retired. Yeah, <laughs> I'm retiring. I'm, I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm not going to fight anymore, buddy. Wow. Yeah. Shut up, dog. <laughs> I'm not going to fight anymore. And the reason why is um, I, I don't find mixed martial arts fun anymore. I don't. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Re- reason why is because I, I find more uh fulfillment in doing jujitsu because i feel it's harder yeah. um i find more fulfillment in helping and training with different people like wow. you know i train with aljo i train with mikey misumichi uh i like to train with people because if i ever wanted to feel how does i want to feel marav's gas tank i want to see how good he is i want to feel his yeah. strength the only way that would ever happen is if me and you were to fight each other if i was a professional athlete Right. I, it would just never happen. But if I'm like, hey, I don't care about winning. I don't care about, you know, ever having an opportunity to fight you. Hey, Marab, can I come train with you? And you're like, yeah, Demetrius, come train. What, let's train. And then when we train together, you're not going to have like, I need to beat you. You're trying to learn from me. I, I don't know. I've never trained outside of training camp when I would fight. Yeah. So now next time I'm in Vegas, I'm like, you're, you're done fighting. I'm like, hey, let's train together. I will be more. I'll get more fulfillment with training with random random athletes from my era than continuing to fight in mixed martial arts. That's how I feel. I because once I get ready for a fight and I beat I beat somebody, it's like, okay. I mean, I beat him. I made this money, which is great. But I didn't get to learn anything in that 25 minutes, if that makes yeah, sense. I understand. I understand. So, <clears throat> well, to answer your question, I, I love fighting and... Um, now uh, I'm not married. I don't have kids, and I'm only focused for fighting. And mm-hmm. uh, I'm a full-time fighter now, mm-hmm. and like uh, uh, I, I love it. I love it, um, and I want to keep fighting. I don't. I don't think what age I will retire. Mm-hmm. I just want to keep fighting as long as I'm healthy mm-hmm. and I'm doing good. You know. And your and your and your body is healthy right now. Like yes. it's besi- obviously besides this, but yeah. No, have you had any major surgeries from training and fighting? So usually. Uh, I mean, thank God, I, I uh, so I, I'm not getting too many injuries. Yeah. You know? uh, so I had two two surgeries before. Um, uh, one on my elbow, I did like nerve some uh, something nerve was get stuck in my elbow and mm-hmm. my hand was getting weak. And uh, other time before Peter Ian's fight, I break my hand and. Oh, that's I, right! I remember that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. And then I did surgery after that, and I hurt um, my shoulder like this bone come out, but I don't did surgery. I avoid mm. so 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 mo- like I'm um, usually. I, how I training? I don't getting. I'm not hurting people. I'm not yeah. getting hurt. So, yeah, yeah. so I mean, God, you know, and uh, so I'm I'm healthy mm. and uh, yeah. Some in, so what I mean is in training, I rather tap out. I rather of give course. up position yep. than in, in the fight. Through, yeah, fight through yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like uh, we're here, and there was another fighter who is in the UFC, and I asked him. I was like, "How much more long?" He he's taking some time away from the sport. And I was like, how much longer you want to fight for? He goes, I don't know, maybe two or three years. And then I'm like, how's your body? He's 30, so he's a lot younger than you. And he and I was like, how's your body? He goes, I can feel it. He goes, I can feel the I can feel the wear and tear. Granted, his path to his UFC career, it was a lot different than yours. He's been in a lot of wars. Um, I don't want to say any names, but you you haven't really been in a lot of back and forth wars where you're taking concussions, yeah. getting knocked out, you, you know, so you've on, honestly been healthy through your whole entire career, especially yeah. a 10 fight win streak. You're not, if you're, you're in a 10 fight win streak, you're beating that ass and sitting in your ass to beat yeah. where a guy who's 50, 50 or 60, 40 in their UFC career. Right. Right. Yeah. You're right. I, I'm not taking any damage in the fight or in the training s- sparring session. That's how my style is. And, um, yeah, I'm not, uh, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't like get heat. Even I can take it. I yeah. don't like it. I, and uh, and I have my own style, and I, I like grapple more. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, I like to be on dominate position. And uh, thank God, yeah, I don't have to go war like some people does, like uh, Justin Gagey does, oh. and. Um, it's when, how Tony Ferguson is to when be. You, when you sit around, I want to interrupt. When you see other athletes go to war, yeah. right? Like for me, I'm like, why the, f-? it's like when I see people try to like, I'm going to knock that guy out. And I was like, why are you going to try to knock that guy out? Why don't yeah. you try to wrestle him maybe right. and yeah. do something different? When you see guys in the sport who take the harder path to a victory, what goes through your mind? You mentioned Justin Gaethje. You see how yeah. he's, suffered so many knockouts and he's knocked some people out too what goes through your mind when you see athletes do that in mixed martial arts it's a it's a risky man you know you you are athlete you know like you know and so it's a i'm gonna say it myself so i'm an athlete i'm i'm just myself like you know like you know it's i'm a uh so like if you lose it's on you, you yeah know? it's like nobody everybody can in your life it you hurts you, you yeah know? absolutely but when you fight like i had one fight against ricky simon top guy it was fight of the night it was back and forth i was punching i was trying to knock him out i dropped him and it was everybody loved the fight but and then uh, like it was one one minute left and i shoot again i was winning the fight mm-hmm. and then i shoot again lift and jump and i hit my forehead to the floor mm-hmm. i get a little bit knocked down and that's where he got me to choke and then uh, now i realize he's he has my neck yep. and i cannot move i get stunk you know like my nervous i cannot fight with my hands yeah and i was moving my legs to i don't want to repair stop me because i cannot fight with my hands i right. show everyone and then they let me fight but end of the end of the end of the fight they said oh i was in and out and i was some people say i was out and whatever they give him win mm-hmm. and then i'm like I mean, why? And, and I realized why I risk. Yeah, I have a fight of the night, mm-hmm. but I lost. And then, <laughs> I got 50K, but I still fucking lost. Yeah, and then if I lost one more, then maybe goodbye, you yeah, see. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. And then it's a risky, you know? And when I see the, the, the ball swinging, one of them will drop. Yeah. So, and then one of them will, it's a risky like mm-hmm. this. Like, you know, when we see the the Russian guy against the Paul Aspinall. Oh, yeah. Tom Aspinall. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of them was going to go down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them was going to get knocked the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, one of them. And then even I think Paolo which wreck him first. He hit him and, first, yeah. yeah and then he came then, back, yeah. And, uh, it's it, one of them, you know, whoever was lucky. You know? Yeah. That was the, you know. So and when I see like, it's good, but... It's you, you're gonna risk your career, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the thing, you yeah. know, I mean, and uh, so yeah, that's, that's why my, it's, I mean, I feel bad for who are gonna lose like this fight, yeah. you know, because it's uh, risky on you, and then, and then if you're gonna lose your job like this, yeah, yeah, you yeah. lose one or two risks like this, bye and bye. then bye-bye UFC. Bye. See, yeah. that's always the thing for me, like, there was a point in time where I would watch fights, and I didn't care about the concussions, the CT, and all yeah. that stuff. I didn't care about it. And I think what changed for me was a Robbie Lawler versus uh, Warrior McDonald. A long time yeah. ago fight. Yeah. Big fight back and forth. Yeah. Both bloody. And the first thing, that's what changed my mind. I sat back and I was like, man, I hope these guys make a lot of money because yeah. they just took years, years off their lives. And then now when I'm watching Muay Thai and they're just fucking beating the shit out of each other. And I'm like, you're gonna get a concussion. Like yeah. you, you, I mean, your brain only yeah. can suffer so much of that. Yeah. And, and you're gonna have a family. You're, you're gonna, gonna have a family. Yeah, you wanna and, have a spend time with your kids and yeah. you're gonna get old, man. You're gonna be, you're like, gonna be slow. Slow, yeah, and that's, and for me, it's just crazy. So like each time I see people like pop pop, they're just blasting back and forth. I'm like, yes, it's cool. For a little bit, but then afterwards I'm like, "Fuck, man, you yeah. guys take way too much. It's just yeah. way too much damage." Yeah. So you're the only other fighter that's ever like, who's came and said it. He goes, "Nah, man, fuck no, that. Like, I, I don't. I, 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 I'm not, I, I get get smart. I think, and I don't. I don't. When I watch, I feel bad. Those guys too. Yeah, I, you know because." It's a risky, you know, how many times you can fight like this. You know, oh, like Tony Ferguson used to fight like this, now we see. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He's 0 th- 7, I believe, yeah. in his last seven fights. Yeah. yeah. And it's unlike you, you're right, your body can only yeah. t- suffer and so much see, damage. Sorry, we see the da- Justin Gaethje. Just Gaethje? Yeah. Justin Gaethje, yeah. He risked the fight, you know, let's go, it's good, but, you know, sometimes maybe I go like this, you yeah. go like this, but. When we very look at rare, very yeah, rare. We, we we talk like this, but yeah. maybe we do same thing. But yes. but 
when we look now, yeah, the gauge loss by the yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then they're gonna show all these highlights. Oh, all, yeah, all the rest of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always I never forget when I got knocked out by Adriano. It's the only time I've been knocked out, right? Just I got up, he goes, blah, knee me. And I'm like, God damn it. I was like, oh well, it's all good. And now each time like they play it and I just I just laugh. I'm like, oh you know it, it is what it is. It's you know, you you uh, you stay in the game long enough. It's bound to happen, right? It's very rare for somebody to get in the game of mixed martial arts and get out unscathed. I mean, uh, Habib Nurmagomedov is one of them. John Jones is another, yeah, another yes, one. Yes. You haven't made a highlight reel yet. Um, it's just, a, it's only a matter. It's not if, it's not when, it, no, it's uh it's not if, it's just when, right? Meaning like if you stay in the game for another 10 years, yeah. another 20 years, oh, yeah. It's gonna happen. Oh yeah, right. Yes, but if you stay in it for two more years, like nope. Yeah, it ain't yeah. happening. I'm, yeah. I'm out. I'm good. Right. right? Exactly. And so I think that's always yeah. a good mindset to have. Like, okay, it could happen, but if I stay smart, be strategic, move my head, move, wrestle, control that distance. When they come in over here and right, take them down. Then you minimize that highlight reel to happen right. to you. Right. Right. But like you're right, yeah, exactly, man. You know, it's a fight and everything happened. Like Islam Mahacho, he's a great fighter, but he get somebody yeah. from nobody get knocked down, sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the guy had not the UFC anymore. Oh yeah, that's right, he's not. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't. He wasn't that level, but you yeah. know, everybody can get you know knocked down and dropped and. We see this, and yeah, so that's what I mean, you know, it's a fight, it's a mixed martial art, and then you have to use your skill to avoid those risks and win the fight, mm -hmm. and at the same time make excited, entertain it, and uh, make money, make 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 me win, yep. move forward, and because it's your career, you know, yeah. you're not like, a, you know, like you if you you drive like crazy, yeah. then you're gonna get accident, right? Yep. But yep. if you drive smart, then yep. you're gonna make end of always. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. How's how's your good friend, Big Big Sean? I forgot his name. <laughs> I uh, yeah, uh, his name is uh, Fake Sean O'Malley, or yeah. Fake, his name is Saba. Saba, how Saba. Saba? Yeah, good. Yeah, I I remember you met him. Right? Met him, yeah, because yeah. he was at the club when yeah, we were yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, is he yeah. doing good? He's doing good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I don't need him now for now because he, he, did, he did what he was supposed to do. Yeah, you know? Saba's like, hey man, you need to go down here. Like, no. It, it reminds me, uh, have you ever seen the movie called Happy Gilmore? I don't remember. Maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah. Happy Gilmore, there was Happy who was trying to win a golf tournament to get uh, money for his grandma's house. Uh, okay. And there was a guy who was an asshole. Not you, but his name was uh, Shooter McGavin. Okay. And he had a buddy, forget the buddy's name, he would call his buddy over to. Uh, distract the main character, mm -hmm. and I feel like you calling Saba. I was like, Saba, come over here. I need you. Uh, then the main the 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 guy who would uh, distract um, the main character, he goes, Hey, hey, shooter, you need me to come and uh, work for you? He goes, No, no, that's okay. I don't need you. So I'm glad Saba's doing well. Yeah, exactly. Tell him we said hello. Okay. And um, Marab, thank you so much for coming to Mighty Cast. This is your opportunity to let people know how they can support you and uh, where they can look forward to in your upcoming fight. Thank you for having me again, uh, and um, uh, it's it's really an honor for me. So yeah, my name is Merab Tualishvili. Uh, you you say how you read, and uh, yeah, I mean it's my social media. Same thing, Merab Tualishvili everywhere. And I want to tell everyone, thank you so much for support and love. I really feel everywhere I go, like everybody. I don't know what Sean O'Malley did wrong or people are trying to be nice to me everybody wants to meet beat <laughs> Sean O'Malley so I don't know what's going on but uh, thank you everyone for support and um, I'm training hard and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys good good show good fight and um, thank you for support and love yeah well I think reason why people love you is because you've never been disrespectful you've always been chill and I told you this is the very first time we ever met you've always been very respectful kind humble you have humility like yes you know you're a better wrestler than me yeah you can be a better wrestler but it's mixed martial arts yeah. you can be a better wrestler you can be a better striker better muay thai or better judo player but when it comes to fighting i'm gonna mix it up so damn good you won't be able to keep up none of this shit you've ever yeah. done up to this point fighting me you're not gonna be able to hang and you do it respectfully yeah. right even though people are like that, 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 that. You're like that's okay you talk you talk but when it comes to fight 
I'm going to smash you. And that's why I think a lot of people respect you and enjoy following your career. So thank you. that is why. Thank you. I think um, that you and people who knows what's, what's, what's real. Oh, yeah. You know, because I know like, what's uh, up. But like some people, I mean, there is some like now we know the trolls and they, <laughs> they call us bowling fighters. But, 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 let's get back to the trolls. How come each time somebody's running their mouth, you always got to go up there and, 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 and confront them. You did it at CJI. You did it a while ago at one of the UFC. You climbed the fucking rafters. How many fights have you been in the street? When I was young, before I was getting into sport, yeah. I was fighting a lot. A lot. A lot. But once I started sport judo, I... Yeah. I no more. I don't have the reaction. I was forgiving them. Yeah. But now I'm MMA fighter. I'm fighting UFC and um, these trolls. They either going the internet crazy or even when they saw your person, hey, they tell you something disrespect. Like, and uh, when I try first, I try to talk to them. Okay, yeah. come and say. Let's yeah. say and come close and tell me. Can yeah. tell me to close and yeah. say bring the same energy, right? Yeah. And then they don't do that. And uh, that guy, the last time at uh, CGI. Yeah. He was. Yeah, I, I, you was there too, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I was sitting watching match, and one guy yelled at me, Mera, um, yeah, he was calling, he was yelling, Mera, Sean is your daddy. And I said, shut up. And I again, I tell him, come here. And then he was keep going on and mm. on. He was keep continuing. I give him warning. I give him a signal, you know, yeah. he should stop, you know. Yeah. But he was keep going on and on. And now only I have to do is I have to go there. Yeah. You know, you, just, <laughs> <laughs> what the you talk all that shit. All right, motherfucker, I'm coming. <laughs> and when you ran up the you ran up the stairs, yeah. you see the video. He was like, "No, God, yeah, please." What did you What did he say when you got up there? Actually, I I don't hear exactly what he was, but he was like uh, so scared. And then after he was no 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 no. Yeah. But now no, that you already fucking I already <laughs> give you a chance before to shut up and stop. Now it's too late, you know. Yeah. I already give you a from the fire. You think I was joking? Yeah. I wasn't joking. But you was joking, I yeah. guess, and you was acting stupid. Then yeah. you gotta pay for it, you know. But first of all, when I I'm like. I wanna I wanna troll him back. You yeah. know, of course I, I you know we are professional fighters, yes, uh, we're not yeah. gonna hurt people, yeah. but and then when I dropped, I was really going to him, like to troll him to make him scared. But I saw, and he was he was scared, but he was sitting. I thought mm -hmm. he was gonna run and yeah. make him run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he don't leave. He was he was so he, I, yeah. he stayed there. I guess he's stupid. Mm -hmm. And then he was there. Hey, sorry, sorry. And then of course like. If he get up and he wants to fight, if he was real man, if yeah. he, he tried to fight me, of course I will fight him. <laughs> <laughs> because he said, but he wasn't real man. He don't deserve me to slap him, you know? But like now, I don't want to just, like, just he's sitting and me, like, leaving him. And yeah. I'm like, get me over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking love Because it's always like, each time it's like, you see it all the time. You, you're minding your own business. That's the, that's the funny part about it. It's like, you, you come, you're not showboating. You come there, you say, oh, excuse me, let me get down, excuse me, excuse yeah. me. And someone's like, Marav, you piece of shit. You're like, yeah. please stop. Yeah. Please, don't do it. <laughs> you fucking suck. Last warning. <laughs> Fuck you, Marav, you motherfucker. You run up there. And then if he's like, if, if, if he's like, no, please don't, you're like, yeah, don't say anything. But if he gets up and like, you want to go? You're like, all right, you're, you're just going to fight. Yeah. Is this out of respect of your, of your pride and your manhood? Or is it just like, you're not going to disrespect me, you know, when I'm in, in my presence? Right, man. You know, so if you say something or if you do something, you have to you have to have a response, respond on this and you have to answer this. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, you have to pay for it, you know. Either you have to... You cannot just say things, and you cannot. Just, the people just not. You have to. You have to be If you're a man, you mm -hmm. when whatever you say, you have to has a mean. Yeah. So if, if I if I say something to you, Demetrius, I have to mean it. You know, I yeah. mean it. You know, mm -hmm. I, whatever. So and then if I call you something bad, I I mean. Mm -hmm. And then if you fight me, I'm ready for fighting. Mm -hmm. If I tell you something, I'm ready for fighting. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you something and you come back to fight me and I run, I'm a piece of shit. I'm a yeah. fucking bitch, right? Yeah. Then that's what I show him. He's a bitch and yeah. he should listen. He learn and some other people. Do learn. you think this is part of the, your culture growing up? Yes. Right? Yes. Like, cause like in the hood, like in the hood where I grew up, like my boys, they didn't yeah. grow up in the hood. So yeah. they're playing football with some boys who grew up in the hood. 
yeah. like, damn, man, you fucking hands. You can't catch the ball. And my son's like, why are they talking to me like that? And I'm like, oh, that's just hood talk, son. Yeah. They, they don't mean it, right? Yeah. And they're kind of friends, right? Like your friends, yes. like let's say, like we're hanging out. I was like, Rob, you fucking suck. You're like, what did you say? Yeah, like, yeah. don't like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, exactly. like so I think um, where you're from, yeah. is there any of that type of talk? Yes. It, or is it always from a stranger? If a stranger says something to you, no. it's like there's yeah. there's there's no tolerance there. No, whole country we have rules. Like we have like a, uh, we have like a street gangsters. We call yeah. uh, Kurdi. Uh huh. So and all we all know, and then we all country even like even if we policemen, we all know those rules. You uh huh. Know? Then there is certain things that you should not say, mm. or if you say something, you have it's, to re ready for fight. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be ready for get beat up. You know. Yeah. You have, should not break this. It's more like morale and more like real mm. man things, and uh, so mm. things like this. And I always follow. And I mean, as a man, you know, I, of course, I'm like I tell you, like if I disrespect somebody. I I I have to be ready for fight yeah, back. Yeah, or because you, back. You, that, yeah, I'm not gonna say just to say like yeah. you know like O'Malley now, he's like oh like when see like when he saw this video the somebody call call me the uh, O'Malley's my dad and I mm -hmm. go I ask him uh, and then he I like, catch him whatever yep. and then now O'Malley say oh this guy can sue me bro. I don't give a shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, the, but what kind of talk is this? Like a man, as a man, mm -hmm. you should support men, not like a somebody trolling. Yeah, trolling somebody. Yeah, yeah. friend. Even this guy was your friend, but still, this guy trolling us. Yeah, he's friend. he's basically being an internet. He's being a bully, yeah. right? Like you're yeah. running your business, right? And somebody said, and I know in, in our American culture, it's like, oh, it's okay. He's just being funny. It's like. Not where I come from. You don't talk yeah. to me that way. Right. I didn't disrespect you. Don't disrespect me. If you disrespect me, you're going to have fucking problems. Right. Yeah, I might get sued, but I don't care. Yeah. I'm Ge Georgian. Like, this is, we don't play this game, right? right? Exactly. I respect it. I understand it, right? And I wouldn't, so I'm, I'm happy you put him in his place because a lot of people need to be put in their place because social media, Twitter, Instagram has made everybody, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, have the balls just to say yeah. whatever they want. Right. Oh, I can say what I want. You can't do anything to me. And it's like, well, I can actually, and I'm going to be reprimanded. I'm going to get in trouble. So, I, I mean, I understand where you come from and I, su you know, I support yeah. your moral and your outlook on this whole situation. Yeah. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> that's the thing, man. And like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. <laughs> Make sure you guys go get my man, Marab, a follow on his social media. Make sure you tune in this fight as he takes on Sean O'Malley at UFC 306. Wait, what, 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 what the fuck, man? Thing, say, I hate to do this to DJ. Say his last name? Say, yeah. Say, I can't. right now, we, we have a joke <sighs> on our show that DJ is bad at pronouncing okay. names. Okay, I give say, it. I open my Instagram. Hey, don't, hey, hey, read, hey, it, hey. read it, read it. Marab, don't fight me in my house, no, okay? No, I'm just going to no. let you know it right now. Tell me. I'll do the best I can, baby. Okay. Should I show you my Instagram? You have, a, you, 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 have, you have a V in your name. Yeah. So, let me see it. Okay. Can okay. You read, just read the how. Yeah. Say De how you. Marab Dvalishvili. Close. So, yeah, Merab Dvalishvili. Oh, Dval Lishvili. Lishvili. Yes. Dval Lishvili. Lishvili. So, Dval Lishvili. Yes. Oh, Dval Lishvili. Yeah. Dval Lishvili. Yes. Okay, yeah, I got it. Say, but Say it again, Merab. Merab Dval Lishvili. Dual. 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 Yeah. Dual. Yeah. Dual. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fucking funny. How, how do you read that again, please? How, how I would read it is Dval... Dwalishvili. Yes. Yeah, it. but you just said Dwal. So Dwalishvili. Dwalvalish. <laughs> Same thing. The V. The V is a W. Oh. Dwal. Dwalishvili. Yes. Dwalishvili. Yes. Yeah. See, in America, when I see the V, V, V. So Dwal, Dwal, Li, Shvili. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll say Dwal. See. I, Don't we, change it. So, uh, yeah. so I think I just call you Marab D. Yeah. Okay. You can. <laughs> okay. But 
any I think European names or any other yeah. country's name, we don't change it. You you say how you read it. You read exactly. Like for me, I was at the airport and yeah. somebody my name is Demetrius. Yeah. Somebody called me Demetrianus. <laughs> and it's not how you that's how you said it, but I'm like, that's how so she reads. Read. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like when I live, there's a place I live and they don't they don't know how to pronounce it. They're like, is that Palop Palop? I'm like, no, it's Puyallup. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, it's okay. It's just how you read the words. Right. So that motherfucker right there. Yeah, that's yeah, you, yeah. Michael. So we just write and read the same thing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Don't, hey, don't fuck don't... you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great episode with our good friend, Marab. Uh, make sure you tune into this fight against uh, Sean O'Malley at UFC 306 at the Sphere. Marab, once again, thank you for coming on the show, brother. I appreciate thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, God bless you and God bless you with beautiful family, man. Yeah, this is this is this yes, is baby. better than any belt the kids like <laughs> I, I yes, yeah. and you'll have your own one day, I promise. You will. If yeah. if that's what you want. Yes, yes, for sure. For sure, yeah. But yeah, like during the during the career, I think it's today it's, it's getting hard yes. man, to meet good girl who you got all this money you got all these girls yeah, getting after that's, you that's the thing it's it's easy this way no this way it's easy <laughs> it's but, easy to get the girls yeah but to have a one and really who really supports you who yeah. really loves you who really wants to have a family yeah and then who really that's all she wants focus and yeah. family and yeah. all you yeah or just family and protects you or mm -hmm. helps you and then be there with you and uh, it's but, hard to find a good one man i know i yeah, know i know I have a, I'm very simple man, yeah. but when it comes to the wife material yeah. girls, I'm trick a little bit. You know? Well, well once but, you once you once you get when you get on that journey to find the right one, come back on the show. We'll give you some pointers and help yeah. you out because he's still trying to find his one too. So, um, I'll, I'll be here to help you. I promise. Thank you. All right, brother. Thank you again. What's going on, guys? I'll give you a big heads up. Mighty Merch is dropping right now. Season 1 has just dropped. All you got to do is go to the description below. It is shopmighty.com. We have delivered and we listen to the community. You guys have been begging, begging, Mighty, please give us a void shirt. And we have delivered the void shirt. And we also got Mighty Cap. And we also have the clean, dingling, just plain Mighty shirt. And we have some Mighty sweatshirts and the void sweatshirt as well. So if you guys want to step up your swag game of season one of the Mighty merch that's being dropped, go to shopmighty.com or check the link in the description below to get your brand new Mighty merch season one. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Mighty Recap. And then we are back. We just got done having Marab on the show. Always oh, enjoy Marab. He's going to fight Sean Amal at UFC 306, the sphere. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is I know it's going to be a very hard fight. It's going to be a very hard fight from Rob just because I don't know, will it be hard? Um, obviously, the biggest thing is he's got to get past the void. He's got to get past the void. Yep, the void. Yep. Pick up your merch at shopmighty.com. <laughs> Pick up the merch, the void merch. Because we all know Sean and Molly's very good about going lateral, quick feints, look away, right hand, push kicks. He's already knocked out one of his uh, teammates, Aljamay Sterling, who Aljo is the same length as Sean and Molly, and he had a hard time getting to him. Granted, Marab is probably better at just forcing the fight and looking to wrestle, but that's still going to be something that Marab is going to have to deal with getting to Sean. And typically, me being a shorter fighter, as Marab is a little bit taller than me, he's like 5'5, five, 5'7. Five, five, no. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm out five. Uh, I think all just five, seven, but um, yeah, yeah. So I'd say Marab's probably 5'5. Five, 5'5. Five, five, five. It's like a giant for us. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, He's going to have a hard time getting to O'Malley, but once he figures that puzzle out, then that's where I think the fight's going to start. And I think him knowing that and realizing that, I think he's in a better he's in a better mind space, uh, head space going into that fight against Sean O'Malley. Yeah, and I, I'm a, and I know we we talk a lot about sometimes fighters were we're biased with and stuff like that, but for both of us, this is a very unique fight because we are friends with both fighters yeah. so it's just it is like i'm gonna be honest it's very weird for me just for for people that don't know i live in phoenix arizona go to tim welch's gym all the time and then marab is just like marab and all are just the best dudes like they're so awesome we've spent a lot of time with them um in this vegas trip so 
for us, this is just like, it, it is, di it is difficult. I'm excited, but it's just like, yeah. ah, someone has to lose. Yeah. It, it's, it's difficult, but at the same time, we're all adults. We're all mature. Whether Marab wins or Sean O'Malley wins, wins, it doesn't affect my outlook on them. That makes sense, right? I, Marab is amazing. He's cool. We've hung out outside of training. Sean O'Malley, he's cool. We've hung outside of training. We've done a lot of work. Not a lot of work. We've done some work together back in the day. May the best man win, right? That's how, that's how I view it. Like if Marab wins, awesome. If Sean O'Malley wins, awesome. I just want to see a great fight and I want nobody to suffer any catastrophic injuries in that fight, right? It might be more weird for you because... I'll, I'll see Marab and Aljo more than I'll see Sean O'Malley because I don't live in Arizona, right? I'm always in Vegas. I'm always talking to Aljo outside mm -hmm. of when I'm out of Vegas. Um, I'll, I'll run into Marab again. So I always think if you approach it, it's like I picked against Cody to lose against Figueredo. I saw him today. I was like, hey, man, what's going on? It's good to see you, right? And I already talked about this in a, a, a other podcast. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if I pick you to lose, please pick against me and hope I lose or get choked out in a tournament. <laughs> it, it's it's just it's just honest. Like I'm just fucking 38. I'm not gonna play this. Oh, well, you said I was gonna lose. Da, da, da. No, I just you know I made it. Best it doesn't win. mean you hate the Don't guy hate that you're saying is losing. It's yeah. it's like if the if the the Los Angeles Lakers are playing the Golden State Warriors and you're like, oh, I think Steph Curry's gonna have 10 threes and win this game. And LeBron's like, hey, what the hell? Fuck you, fuck yeah. you. Yeah, it's like oh, it's just like um you know Izzy versus Drickus Duplessis. Right, when I meet Drickus Duplessis, if I ever meet him or we ever have him on a podcast, I'm going to say, dude, I, I thought this was going to whoop your ass, but you have an interesting <laughs> style about going. I just saw your right favor. He fought, uh, he grappled against Bibiano Fernandez. And I told you, right, I was like, I thought Bibiano was going to work you, dog. I was like, he was going to whoop your ass. He goes, yeah, nah, he didn't. Nah, <laughs> nah, I have some series that I go through every day. I train three days a week and we're totally cool. N nothing wrong at all. And I was being honest. Like, I, I'm not going to be like, man, good job beating, you know, Beating Bibiana Fernandez, you're you're so good. I was like, nah, I was shocked you actually beat him. I thought he was gonna fucking kick your ass. He goes, nah, he didn't, right? So I think that's always the best way to go about. It. Like even for Marab or Sean O'Malley, it's gonna be a hard fight for Marab just to get to him, right? And for Sean O'Malley, it's gonna be a hard fight for him because he's got to keep Marab away. I think if you approach it with that honesty, where it's like it's gonna be, it's not gonna be an easy fight for you, Marab. Then it's, you don't have to beat around the bush, right? And so I think Marab has always been um, respectful and. Each time I've always said that about him fighting, even when I told Aljo, it's going to be a hard fight for you to fight uh, Sean Michaels. You got to get to him, right? If, so, but I'm super excited. And uh, one thing I want to talk about is like 10 fight win streak. 10 fight win streak in a fucking UFC. And he's now just getting a title shot. Granted, Aljo was the champion. He wasn't going to fight Aljo. But that was funny what he said because he he was making the point like, nah, UFC wasn't going to give me a title shot even if Aljo wasn't champ. That's what he was saying to you. So oh, he didn't he didn't think it gotcha. had anything to do with that. Um, you think so? I agree with you. I, I think it more was just UFC knowing he would say no. Yeah. Because he's been so deserving. And then you go against Henry Cejudo, which Aljo like very slim margins beats Henry. Mm -hmm. And then... Marab just dominates him. So it's, he was very, it was deserved a long time ago, but he, I think he has a chip on his shoulder. There's no denying it. He's going against oh. Sean O'Malley. We've seen the promotional support that he gets. Mm -hmm. And then we see, you know, Marab, you have Dana White going nuts at him for having a little cut. Like, let's be honest, we know UFC would prefer Sean O'Malley in this sphere card, this, this huge pay per view event they probably want Sean O'Malley to win. So he has a huge chip on his shoulder. Yeah. And um, I think it is, I don't know what the odds are for the fight, but I think it is as unpredictable as it gets. Like, I don't, Oh yeah, I, I really don't know. don't know who's going to win. Like when it's time to do final predictions, like don't, don't tell me to pick somebody. <laughs> like I'm going to pick, like if I'm going to say, if this person does X, Y, Z, he should win. If this person does this, X, Y, Z, he should win. So to put on who's able to go out there and execute their game plan is going to win the fight because I truly feel that anything can fucking happen. Like it's very rare. Like, you know, when, uh, Jamal Hill fought Alex Pijeda and he goes, I'm going to try and knock him out. Well, good luck with that. So mm -hmm. I, I think he's probably going to, you know, I think Alex Pieda has more opportunity to beat Jamal Hill, but that one is going to be an interesting fight. But I think, I agree with you. It's way more deserving. 10 fight win streak. And here's the crazy thing. Who's after that? If he beats Sean, I'm like, who is Marab going to fight next? 
Because well, it's, it's going to be Umar. He's oh yeah, I forgot yeah, about Umar. Umar's, right off. Umar's going to be next in line, and, and then he could fight Corey and, Sanhagen. And I think I love the the outlook of the bantamweight division. If if Sean wins, like, and if he you first of all, Umar if, right if he wins, he's fucking beat Marab. So I mean, that's crazy. So then yeah. you have him beat Marab, and then go against Umar. You have that almost. Conor McGregor Habib mm. flashbacks to it. Yeah, yeah. And then if Marab wins, you have two just complete badass wrestlers. That will be a really interesting matchup. So no Umar, I'm pretty sure Dana said he's next. He's next no matter what. Okay. Which which he deserves it. Yeah, yeah. he's Corey playing on the same thing. What yeah. if six, seven fight, one streak, undefeated in his whole career mm -hmm. and his UFC. So I didn't think it was funny how many you were talking about like how you said it from your mouth that all these bookings are booked off WWE style, right? It's not booked off who is more deserving of a title shot in the divisions, right? Yeah, which, and I think a balance of it is is always good. I mean, we want the entertaining matchups, of but course. you see Marab 10, like even you were like, wait a minute. Oh, so you're saying you have 10 wins in UFC and it's, no, 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 I've I've won 10 fights but in, a UFC. in a row in UFC. That's in a row. That's cr to do that and not get a title shot. It's almost 60 impossible. 60% of the people who make it to UFC don't even get three or four fight wins. Right? I, it's like, I, I, and I'm being very generous of that 60%. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, if, you, if you take how many athletes have ever been in the UFC and you span it out of a career from 1993 all the way to 2024, how many of those fighters came in the UFC and actually did like four fights, four consecutive wins in a row, and now are still in, in the UFC, right? Like the guy, yeah, who, the guy who beat is on Makachev, he's not in the UFC anymore, right? And so you put that in a context, that's why I say 60%. Yeah, and, and I guess I wanted to also just get your take on the on the Sphere show. It's it is this weekend. Um, I, I will say, I mean, I, I don't want to always be the guy that just like throws cold water on these no. cards, but I think the draw is first of all the Sphere, and then it's also the main event. That yeah. the card. Um, I, I'm not even pulling it up right now, but it's just like not pretty. If I'm being honest. Um, Almost yeah, um, so, so it, but but what do you what do you think of just that? That event and that stage for Marab and Sean, because yeah. obviously I think it's yeah. a, one of the biggest stages we're ever going to see in a very, very long time. Yeah, looking at this card, USC 306, it's, it's an interesting one. Obviously, I think the biggest draw is Sean O'Malley versus Marab. And then the co main event, you have Valentino Shevchenko taking on Alexa. Um, and then you have Diego Lopez taking on Brian Ortega. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so there, there, there are, I there, mean, there are, there are some there are bangers good, on yeah, it. Yeah. And I'm not going to totally, you know, shit on it, but. For what's being built up as the biggest, you know, combat sports event ever, it's not quite there. I don't think it's there. the biggest combat sport event ever. I think it's the biggest combat sport platform ever because there has never been an event put on in the sphere. And just to put the event on in the sphere, I think it was like $16 million. Yeah, yeah. I think I think $16 million. I I wasn't sure if that was... <laughs> we we keep having the the Demetrius's children come in and out. They're, they're fighting right now. They're <laughs> yeah. And for people who don't know, this this isn't as much as it looks like a tremendous like little TV studio almost. This is Demetrius's father's man cave. Man cave. So, that we so, turn, yeah. we turned into a fucking studio. Yeah, which it looks tremendous, but no. Um. So so, so we, apologies for that. So we but. had the kids. So I gave my daughter some Fanta. She had Fanta, which has caffeine, yellow, <laughs> yellow four, and red fucking forty in it, which drives her crazy. And now they're over there fucking pestering her, and I'm like, guys, like, just take stuff away from her. She's she's six years old. Um, but yeah, I think the card's great. I think it's a good platform for Marabi well to showcase his skills. It'd be kind of interesting to see if it sells out there. Um, and yeah, I heard the tickets are like absolutely insane. Um, to buy them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so it's... It's going to um, be very rare. But it, you know, it's a thing that you're going to have this monumental time where you can go to an event like that because it will never be in there. And I can't wait to watch it on the pay-per-view just to see how they execute it. Right, like, are they going to use the jumbotron and like show the actual fight, or is it just going to be like, what are they going to do? Then will it distract the fighters? Like, you know what I mean? Because I mean, I, I've never been to a Spear show, but I, I I will say the one, um, not to be negative about the Spear. If you're a fan of the sport, you have to be. This is a proud moment, right? Like, this is a landmark achievement of what started out in, um, I believe, 1994 is a very niche sport, yep. has now got to the point where you're able to have an event at the sphere of this magnitude. So I think it's a moment to celebrate. And 
anyone who's who's criticizing oh Sean O'Malley and Marab aren't Mexican or something like that. I, I don't care about any of that because it, it, oh, of course that'd be better, but I think it is a worthy main event is my oh, biggest one, point. Like, oh, one that is a sick fight, one that fans have wanted for a long time. So I, I think it's worthy of a main event. Yeah, of the sphere. Yeah, so let's let's um we might as well just roll roll through this card a little bit. Sean Sean versus Marab main event, and and I know these odds are going to change, but it's pretty much a pick 'em. So you know, fifty fifty odds right there. Co main event Alexa Grasso Valentina Shevchenko trilogy, and that's also a pick 'em. So we got two really toss up uh, main event co main event for for those titles, and then yeah, Ortego Lopez is just a banger. I'll be banger. Yeah. As long as, that, as long as everybody stays healthy. Yeah, that should be fight. That could be fight of the night easily. And uh, then our boy, um, R- uh, Raul Rosas Jr., who we saw um, at the the performance center, not performance center, the performance institute. Mm-hmm. You met him for the first time. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts about him? He has some. That's a guy. That's a guy I'd love to see you roll with, actually, just because he's. He, and I know Aljo has um, a good amount of times, but yeah. seems like a really, really good grappler for, you know, super young age. Yeah, I think a lot of these guys are starting super young in mixed martial arts, where when I jumped in mixed martial arts, I was 18 years old, so I had a wrestling background. But I think the generation now is so much younger, and they're starting way, way younger. He's had, what, a couple of fights in UFC. He got knocked out one big one time. Um, but I think the, the, the sky's the limit with him. The biggest thing is he's just so young. So he's been fighting for a very, not for a very long time, but he's just still young, right? So it's kind of a hard engage to see where his career is going to go in a stacked division. But other than that, that card is pretty solid. I think the Grasso versus Valentino Shevchenko, I think it's going to come out who's going to execute the game plan. I think Shevchenko's way better on her feet. Um, but Grasso beat her up on her feet. And I give the gra- the grappling advantage to Grasso. Just a correction, I, did, I didn't think it was a knockout. He, he lost by decision, but oh, he uh, did. Ra- Rahul Rosas, yeah. I but no, he- it, it was very one sided, which is probably what oh. why you're thinking it was very one sided versus Christian Rodriguez. But um, in his in his brief UFC career, he has four four fights, is three three and one with a couple submissions. So yeah, um, still still only how old nineteen is he? years old. He's nineteen years old. 19. It's like you're nineteen. It's like. You give him ten years, I'll be shocked if he's gonna be in the UFC still. Yeah, that, that's a lot of. That's, a, uh, that's ten. It'd years. almost be better if he was just training this whole time instead training of and taking the damage and all that stuff. Yeah, so ten years in his career in the UFC, whether he's winning or losing, that's a long time. Let's let's do fifteen years. He'll be nineteen, twenty nine. He'll be thirty three, thirty four. So he'll probably be retired by fifteen years, I think. Um, but we'll see. I, I I don't really know him, but I'm sure he's. You know, got to go camp around him, and I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, I mean, you look at yeah, Chee Wee Wee. It was funny when we when we walked in. I wasn't sure who was with him, but his team, whatever. But they were all wearing the Chee Wee Wee shirts. Sure. Yeah, but uh, no, I mean, it, it did work out for you know Robbie Lawler, Nate Diaz. Yeah. So it, it's it is possible, and oh, he, of course, and he has a obviously very grappling super ridiculous at getting the back yep. style so yep, yep. maybe we're wrong and he'll 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 be there when he's like 40. what weight class did he fight at um ba- bantam weight so 135 yeah so he's gonna grow so I'm make sure i didn't get that wrong yeah yeah so he's gonna grow he's 19 so uh, when he hits 25 if he doesn't stop his body from growing he'll probably be at 145 and then that'll be a different division, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, I mean Nate Diaz got up to 170, so I, I feel like, yeah, his body yeah. will have and, to go up eventually. And, and, and Nick and Robbie, they left the UFC and came back to the UFC, so they, they, they didn't fight at the highest level the whole entire career. Like, mm-hmm. Nate Diaz, no, Nick Diaz with the strike force, he went, did other things, and he came back. He just got back to the UFC. He was supposed to fight, uh, you know, Lucent. Uh, how do you say his last yeah, name? Yeah, Vicente Luque. Uh, Vicente Luque. Um, and then Robbie Lawler, he left the UFC, came back and fought. So uh, we'll see. But I think, you know, to to wrap this up, I think Marab has always been amazing. I'm excited to see what he does. I mean, I always love his Instagram videos because he's always with fucking girls every single time. And Saba, he he sent Saba home, so he's not going to be doing any more skits with fake Sean O'Malley. And... Yeah, I'm pumped to see that but, fight. But that's why that's that's my little rant that we we already talked about it off camera. I, I get the whole cut situation. Of course, he shouldn't have posts on Instagram. Fine. Yeah. But he would not be as popular as he is right now with all the social media. He, oh. if oh, I don't care about, we already talked about it. Ten fights, wins in a row. Right. What did that get him? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Like so, he. 
I I want him to keep posting these these Sean O'Malley oh, videos yeah, and yeah. With all the girls. I don't want him to lose that for a second. I want Marab to to uh, continue having that per- showing that side of his personality. Mm-hmm. And so um, I didn't love the the Dana White calling him a what do you say he was was he a dumb. He was I think he said he was dumb. dumb. Like yeah. I can't believe how dumb our fighters are. Like I'm. Yeah. I, I don't agree. Like I, when I look at it, as it's easier for me as the content creator, but yeah. I'm like, this guy is smart. He knows how to promote a fight. He knows how to make it interesting. So let's keep getting the fake Sean's, the girl, the pretty girls. <laughs> you're, like, you're, like, you're like, we're going to get one of those videos with one of the girls. Yeah. I, I, I want to help you. I want to help you carry some of that booty and all that good stuff. I agree with you. I don't think he, I don't think he was dumb. I don't think he was stupid when he did it. He, you know, he's like, Hey, you know, what does it look like? Oh, I'm on Instagram. I'll do go Instagram live and see what happens. And then it's just sort of happened that. <laughs> Avery and her mom tuned into the show and Dana White didn't really like it. But because you know, they're main eventing the sphere. It's yeah. kind of a big deal. I think he's like such a humble dude that it hasn't got in his head yet of the you magnitude did. of this event. And, um, or the magnitude of how people really enjoy him, right? Like people really enjoy him as a person, as a fighter, um, as a spokesperson, or whatever you want to call it. People just enjoy him. And I'm one of them. And I hope he keeps on with the 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 skits on instagram and instagram live but i i don't agree with dana white saying he was stupid and he's dumb because like yeah, he said he's not. it's a cut it's going to happen right it's going to happen and yes sean could try to target his eye but he's still sean still got to hit him aren't you always trying to do that anyways if exactly. i mean i'm not a fighter but it's like aren't you trying to punch him in the face anyway and trying to not be punched so yeah same um, game hit yeah. to be uh hit somebody and not be not to be hit and uh it's it's gonna be hard for Sean to hit him. It's also gonna be hard for Marab to get there. So I can't wait to see it. Yes, Tannen. No, wait. Fuck. I know. And thank thank you to first four Marab. Marab took a sip and he was like, yeah. "It's delicious." He goes, "No, yeah." Mm, I, I do love this this blue raspberry flavor. So, um, thank thank you, first form sponsoring the pod. But no, I'd say other other than that, just good luck to um Sean and Marab. Yep. Looking forward to it. And, and no, I, th- I think it's going to be, I can't wait to see that fight. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Yeah. At, at the sphere to see how they do it, like Danny said, we're going to start with the beginning of Mexican fighting, and then we're yeah. going to end with the future of Mexican. I was like, rah, rah. they're not Mexican, yeah. Sean, and that. So, Georgian and Georgian and, versus and, uh, American. I, I think it's Irish, yeah, American. So, Irish American. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, boys, if you guys enjoyed this episode of the Mighty Recap, please leave a like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know you go live and let me know in the comment below what skit that Marab has done has been your favorite. I am your host, Mr. Johnson. That's my co-host, Michael Wandover. As always, we'll see you guys at the next episode of The Mighty Cast. Marab Dualishvili. Say it one more time. Marab Dualishvili. That was not. Dualishvili. Dualishvili. Whatever. I'm going to fucking choke you. You hear me?